Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now before we get started in tonight's fly, if you entered to win the Dr. Slick Toolkit in last week's video, stick around to the end, I will announce the winner of that one. Or you can jump to the end if you entered, see if you won or not. Don't do that, that's cheesy. Or if you do that, jump to the end, check it out, then come back, then watch it, that'd be cool too. So anyway, lately I have been on a Southern Appalachian Great Smoky Mountain fly tying kick and there are so many really classic patterns in this field. It's just amazing. I've been having a good time tying these. So I'm starting a new series tonight, Southern Appalachian Trout Flies. I'm, my goal is to tie as many as I can from Don Kirk's book, The Hatches and Fly Patterns of the Great Smoky Mountains. A great book. If you haven't checked this out and you are at all interested in this field, give it a look. So tonight's pattern is the first in this series. It is the Teleco Nymph named after the Teleco River in southeastern Tennessee. I've fished there several times growing up in Georgia, not too far off. I think you're gonna like this pattern. It's not too difficult to tie. Let's get started. So there it is in the vise, Teleco Nymph. I will explain the materials as I go and put the recipe in the description. So I'm tying this on a size 12 nymph hook. It's a 2X long, 1X strong. I'm going to put about, I don't know, 10 or 12 wraps of 015, however many it takes to weight about half the fly. Black 70 denier UTC. I'm going to put a little dam right behind the weight, take it up over the weight, put a taper up front, and then take it back to the bend of the hook. Now, lots of variants of this Teleco nymph. Some of them have a tail and some of them don't. Most of the ones I've seen that do are golden pheasant tippets. Doesn't matter what size feather you use, we're not really worried about getting that second bar. If you do get it, that's fine. But if not, just get the length right. Which is almost a body length. Not quite, but it's gonna be more than the gap of the hook, so. There would be a body length. We're going to go a little bit shorter. So I'm going to tie it in probably about where that bar is, that, that first black bar. Check your position. And then just catch this in up here to where you started the weight. It'll help fill in that gap right there. Don't worry about that having a step between the tail and the weight up here. It's more important to have a little taper up front. Uh, that's when you'll see in just a minute what I'm talking about. Okay, so next component, peacock hurl. This is going to be the rib and the shell back. So at least six strands. Snip off the butt ends, the brittle ends, not the butt ends, so it's the tips actually. And then just catch these in. This is a, a, a piece for the fly just tied, so... With six or seven strands of peacock curl, you can at least get a couple flies out of it. And bend it over, because that's where that's how long your shell back's going to be. Well, I'm going to go back a couple more wraps. Take a look at it. Okay, I think that will look better right there. So let's go ahead and catch these in, or break them off, cut them off, whatever you want. And if you haven't, if you didn't get a good taper right here, now's a chance to, to fix that. Get a little bit of a taper so you'll avoid that step off when we're rack, wrapping our hackle and then catching in the wing case. Okay, so take your thread back to where you started this, start of the tail. Okay, when you got your thread back to where you're going to catch it in, take the yellow chenille. I've also seen these tied with green, but more often than not yellow. And you'll see how buggy this is going to be. If you don't like it as buggy, just use yarn or a, a smaller chenille if you can, if you got it. This is the only size chenille I have right now. It's a medium, but it's okay. I, I think this fly looks a little bit better when it's just a little bit buggier. Okay, so take your thread back up to the front where we're gonna stop this chenille. Now you wanna wrap this, touch and turns, almost overlapping a little bit, all the way up. It's gonna leave a few little grooves 
and that's going to be fine. That's where we'll wrap our peacock curl rib. So just touching turns. I don't really want them overlapping too much, maybe just a little there. And take it up there. That is going to be fine right there. So go ahead and catch this in. Snip off this excess. All right, capture that in just a little bit. Clean it up if you need to. Okay, now you've got your six or stra seven strands of peacock curl. Take the one that is closest to you. That will, it won't mess up any of the others when you start wrapping it. So just take your time here and wrap your rib. Evenly spaced. It's probably naturally want to go, want, going to want to go in these grooves. And that's fine. That's probably what's going to look best. So when you get it back up to the front, catch this one in and snip it off. Now before we wrap this wing case, I'm going to go ahead and tie in the throat. Now the throat on this hackle, brown hackle, if you've got small brown, a small brown rooster hackle, or maybe a furnace, you can just wrap it all the way around and then push it under. I've done that for a few. I think it is a bit easier to just take your brown hackle fiber, grab about I don't know, 15 or so of them if you can. Snip that off and then we'll just tie this directly on underneath. So if you've got a rotary vise, angle it up, do that right there. And you want these pretty much to the tip, the point of the hook. So I'm gonna lay that in right there. Two wraps, medium, and then adjust. Make sure you're, you're where you want. Are you coming off the bottom? Pretty much. Okay. And you can go ahead and take another tight wrap to secure that. Let's do two. And then snip off this excess. Just get in here and get as close as you can. I'm going to have a little bit clean up right there so I don't clobber my eye. See if we can push that down right there. Okay. And it's opened it up a little bit. Now let's get our hook situated again. Now wrap your wing case over. You'll want to lay these kind of parallel to each other so they're not directly on top of each other when you're you're doing your wing case so sort of like that right there I'll do a loose wrap and then check it let's do two so it just doesn't fall off and then check it are you going over directly over the top pretty close I'm happy enough with that so I'm gonna put a tight wrap right behind them. Reach in here and snip these off. Now let's clean up our head. Check your eye, make sure you're not clobbering that. It happens. I'm gonna push this throat back down here and then take that right directly up to the eye and build this ramp right back up. So not a whole lot of cleanup left to do. Let's put a whip finish on this. Four or five turns will suffice. And a drop of head cement or UV resin. And a classic Smoky Mountain Southern Appalachian Teleco Nymph is done. All right, everybody. Hey, bear with me. This is the first time I've done this. You can see the page on the screen here is the Gleam.io interface. I've got one competition. It is finished. We'll go into it. You can see I've got 18 folks who have registered for this one. So we'll click on this, and I haven't done this yet. 
Okay, it's showing right there that it ended. This is the splash page. Now you can see the 18 entries right here. So I think we click on the winners and it's saying one winner unpicked and let's click on draw the winners. Are you ready? I don't have no idea what's gonna happen when I click this. It might be a pop-up, it might go right to it. Let's go. Drawing the winners. Okay, winners to draw one. Allow repeat winners, doesn't matter, we're only doing one. So one winner's unpicked with 18 potential users that can win. Okay, we're gonna draw them, here it goes. 10%, 100%. Announcing the winners. Okay, Deb from Conover, North Carolina. Congratulations, Deb from Conover, North Carolina. All right, well, that was easy. So, Deb, if you're watching this, I should have emailed you already. Check your spam folder if you haven't seen anything from Matt. It will be from my personal account. So, um, there you go, folks. That's it. That was pretty simple. We'll try it again next month. So there you have it, folks. Congratulations again to Deb for winning the Dr. Slick Fly Tying Toolkit. Now, if you didn't win, I do encourage you to keep watching the videos. We're going to do another giveaway next month in August. It's going to be the Scientific Anglers Fly Tying Toolkit. It's a similar value as the other one. It's got a few materials in it and some mid-level tools for a novice and introductory level tire. It's a pretty solid kit. So, that's all. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you next time.